Hey there and welcome to Procedural Worlds. In this tutorial I'll show you how to use the river feature of Gina Pro. Okay so here is a nice terrain I created in Gaia Pro. You don't need to use Gaia to do this, this will work on any terrain. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click in my hierarchy and go Gina add river flow. This is a handy little utility that we made that can automate the process of finding where a river would go in your terrain. So if I control left click to add a point, what we're doing here is we're adding where the river would start and I'll just add another one there. We'll go create river flow. What this has done is interpreted your terrain and worked out where the river would flow. Okay. So the next thing to do is create a river spline. Now, when you look at this, at first you might think that this is a real problem, but see what's actually happening here is our spline doesn't have any real depth information for the river. So what we need to do is actually carve the river. If you already have quite a deep valley, it'll just work, but for very shallow areas like this, you'll get these weird issues. So, a river spline is just a genus spline with extensions. So the first extension is our carve extension. When I click into that, we can see I can now set the carve settings for these two rivers. So I'm going to decrease the height. So we're digging a bit more uh, depth. So you can see a real time preview. And then I might make them a bit wider. And then you can add in a bit of noise just to vary it up a bit. So I like to set my frequency fairly low and then my lacunarity fairly low as well. So um, you can see I'm just modifying the, the banks ever so slightly. I'm also not a big fan of too much strength, so just a little bit and um, yeah, that's, that's just enough to vary it up a bit. Then I'll go carve. So what's happened now is the river is now fitting within the channel that we've created for it. If you had lots of trees and grass and you were doing this on an already populated terrain, then you could use the clear details and the clear trees features. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is modify my Gina uh, river itself. So in order to support large terrains, if you've got multi tile terrains, we can actually split our meshes at terrains when we when we finalize or bake our river. We can add colliders to a river, which we do automatically. We can, um, sometimes if you've got other objects in your scene and you put them there, the river will detect them and try and flow over them. So by raycasting to terrain, we only hit the terrain to work out where our river is. And then we can also increase our depth. So now, the river looks the river looks much better. If you've got uh, Gaia, then the river will automatically blend into the ocean as well. All right, so we've made our river, and it's looking okay. We can then change the way it looks by choosing a different Gina uh, profile. And if you've got your own shader, you can just drop in your own shader material. So let's go back to our river. The last thing you can do is step into our reflection probe spawner and this will basically put reflection probes along your river. So if we go spawn now we've got nice reflections. This time we'll actually add a river semi manually. So let's go right click Gina add a river flow and I control left click here and let's just see what happens. It's found its way down to the sea, but you can also see it got itself in a bit of a mess here. This is not a very good, uh, that, that won't generate us a nice spline. I'll find somewhere else that's maybe a little bit flatter. Maybe here and try that again. Okay, didn't do anything at all for us that time because the terrain was too flat there. So maybe here. Okay, this is a great example. The terrain was quite flat and then it's raised a bit. So our river flow 
has not managed to find its way down to the sea. So what we can do is we can still create a river spline. And because this is just a genus spline, you can actually modify this thing yourself. And if I hit control click, control click, I'm actually following the natural contour of the terrain myself. So this is what you can do when you know the terrain's not really helping you and there's not enough height information for us to make any meaningful judgments about where our river should go. See out here it's quite wide. So I'll just add a few more nodes in here. And just take it to the edge of our terrain. All right. So the same thing as before still applies. Like we've got a bit of natural depth to the terrain here, but we could make our uh, river a little bit deeper. So I'll go to my carve extension again and just decrease the, the depth and maybe increase its width and do my little trick with noise and then go carve. So now we've got our river nicely carved into our terrain. I'll go into my river itself and increase the depth. And voila, we've got a nice river. I'll just add um, a, um, some reflections to it. And there you go. One of the other nice features of the river system and actually the, the spline system and all overall is that you can actually what we call baking things and what a bake does is basically disconnects Gina Pro from the entire thing so what you end up with is a standard mesh with the material on it um, also if you've got large uh, environments then we can split these at the edge of your terrain so that you, you when you're doing streaming with terrains you only get the one terrain in there so if I just go bake river uh, yep boom and cool now it's just a normal old mesh so you can go and edit it as you wish you can put your own materials on it and so on and so on all right thanks for watching